Last year, Brooks revealed one of the surprise shoes of the year in the Ghost Max 1, which many dubbed the Hoka Clifton Killer. The shoe was received so well that they decided to fast track the second version with minor updates, but to me, the shoes couldn't be more different. Meet the Brooks Ghost Max. Two. What's up everyone? I'm Eric McIntyre aka Rad Dad Bod and you're watching Rad Dad Bod TV where we review running shoes. If it's your first time here you may notice some timestamps in the description below. Feel free to click around and skip to the parts that you want to watch but if you do so I would sure appreciate if you came back to watch the full review when you get a second because I put a lot of time and effort into these videos. If you're a returning viewer and you still haven't hit that subscribe button please go ahead and do so and, and set your notifications to on to get alerts every time I post a new review and if you like what you hear today please go ahead leave a like or even a comment as any engagement goes a long way. Now before we get into the meat of this review you, let's talk about some disclaimers and disclosures, which are honestly none. I actually bought this shoe with my own money. I should say though, I did get a discount from my local running store, Utah Run, and I have made content for them in the past. That being said, neither Brooks nor anyone at all gets to watch this review beforehand. All thoughts are entirely my own. Now with that out of the way, let's talk about the intended use of the Ghost Max 2. This shoe is what I would consider a traditional Max Cushion daily trainer, and Brooks kind of categorizes it as those easy days, those recovery recovery runs, maybe long runs, as well as a great walking shoe. As such, that's how we're going to be evaluating the shoe today. Now, from a price perspective, this shoe comes in at $149.95 or basically $150, which is on the lower end or just kind of in that general standard range for a Max Cushion Daily Trainer. A lot of Max Cushion shoes nowadays kind of cost more towards the 160, so this may be a slightly more budget-friendly option. Now from a specs perspective, the shoe comes in at 10.9 ounces, which is heavy, yes, but is not unusual for a Max Cushion Daily Trainer. And we have a 39 millimeter heel and a 33 millimeter forefoot for a six millimeter heel to toe drop, um, which, is actually very unusual for Brooks, but consistent with the Ghost Max 1. For those who are used to running in Brooks running shoes, they tend to be 12 or 10 millimeter heel to toe drops. The exception to that will be the actual Hyperion line, which is kind of their performance running or racing line. In fact, when compared to the Brooks Ghost, which shares kind of the nomenclature with this shoe, the Brooks Ghost is a 12 millimeter heel to toe drop. So the Ghost Max 2 and Ghost Max 1, I believe, have a six millimeter difference in heel to toe drop, which is very significant actually. So talking about the fit, I feel like the shoe fits true to size and it's more of a standard fitting shoe, but if you're used to Brooks running shoes, it's going to feel wide overall. If you're not used to Brooks and you're used to just kind of standard fitting shoes from other brands, then this this is going to be an average fit and may even feel a little bit snug in the midfoot. Overall, I wouldn't recommend that you size up or down, just go with your normal running shoe size. Now moving on to the upper, the upper is made of a 3D print mesh, um, which is a change from the first iteration. I'm not exactly sure the material that was used in the Brooks Ghost Max 1, but I found that this material was a little, little bit more breathable and it tends to be Maybe not flexible, but just a little bit more high volume. You feel like your sh you feel like your foot actually has a little bit of room to kind of expand and stretch. When in the Brooks Ghost One, I did feel a little bit constrained and overly locked in. Now, speaking of being locked in, I do feel like the shoe has decent lockdown. My foot was not shifting around in the shoe at all. I think we can attribute that mainly to kind of the plush elements in the shoe. As is pretty typical with Max Cushion running shoes, you have a fairly thick tongue, though. I have seen a lot thicker on uh, Max Cushion shoes and then some good padding here in the heel cup and around kind of that ankle collar. So I feel like the heel cup there does a good job of keeping your heel locked in place, uh, even without the use of a runner's knot. And then again, the thick tongue as well as the laces being locked into the tongue allow for a nice kind of snug midfoot there that's gonna keep you locked in place. Speaking about that cushion, I tend to find that Max Cushion shoes are just way too much with the uppers and they tend to be really, really warm, um, just kind of overwhelming, too much plush, uh, which makes them very, very comfortable for kind of daily use as far as like walking around. But to me, sometimes feels like overkill when you're doing even just an easier recovery run. Um, with this shoe, I would compare it and say, it, yes, it's on the higher end of overall cushion in the upper, but it is a little bit less overwhelming than some of the other Max Cushion shoes on the market. Um, it's by no means a minimal shoe, don't get it twisted. Um, and it's much more cushion than a standard daily trainer. But I did find that this material just seemed to breathe a little bit better than most. 
Now, moving on to the midsole, this was the biggest change in the shoe from version one to version two. They went with DNA Loft V3, which is now called DNA Loft Nitrogen Infused. Um, and I believe they actually added a tiny bit more stack as well. Now, for those who ran in the Brooks Ghost Max 1, uh, you may remember that that foam felt a little bit firm. In fact, when you really kind of put a lot of force into that shoe, you got a good amount of energy return and it was almost snappy. Like it was honestly a little bit confusing. Um, because it was supposed to be this like recovery day shoe, right? Like this kind of, again, the, the trying to go up against the Hoka style cushioning and suddenly you were getting like this bounce off of the ground, um, which was really, really cool. It had a lot of pace versatility. I don't feel like the Ghost Max 2 carried on with that. So by going with a slightly softer foam and a little bit higher stack of softer foam, this does feel more like a true max cushion shoe. Um, the foam is not squish. Like if you were thinking of like the fresh foam uh, 1080 from New Balance, like that's the, if that's the softest foam that we're dealing with, this is probably closer somewhere to like a Hoka Clifton, um, or maybe even between a Hoka Clifton and a Gel Nimbus 26, where I find the Gel Nimbus 26 foam to be fairly firm, actually. So this foam is gonna have a lot of give. You're gonna sink into the shoe. As such, I actually felt like it had better heel to toe transition. It was a little bit smoother than the Ghost Max 1 that I felt was a little bit clunky, um, but it's not giving you really any energy return in comparison. So like the Ghost Max 1 felt really, really good at strides, the Ghost Max 2, can, you can do strides, but you feel like you're fighting kind of your legs a little bit more with this shoe on foot versus the first one felt really, really smooth. And I did actually do, and I did actually do a couple of runs where I switched between the two shoes just to be sure. And at least with how they interact with my foot and my stride, that was kind of the overall feel. So, for, so from a pace versatility standpoint, the Ghost Max 2 really is like a traditional, like, hey, it's for easy days, it's for recovery runs, it's for long runs. If you're gonna be doing any pace beyond like some strides at the end of your run, then it's probably not the shoe that you're gonna wanna use for that particular run. Now, something that's really interesting with this midsole is because of the grooves as well as the cutout or channel there in the outsole, then you're gonna get kind of this very, very stable base overall. That, and it's a fairly wide overall base for a max cushion running shoe, which is going to, again, aid in that stability. So I do think that there are runners who need stability shoes that may actually be able to get by with this shoe. Now, speaking about that channel, or rather just moving to the outsole, the outsole has that blown rubber, and I'm pretty sure it's the same compound, same setup as the Ghost Max one, and it gets the job done. I don't think there's anything particularly like special about it, um, but from an outsole, you just want to have you know, good grip on the roads, good grip on the treadmill, good grip on wherever really you're running. Um, and you get kind of a full coverage. So it's going to be durable. It's going to last, it's thick. Um, and sure, it probably adds some weight, but we're dealing with a max cushion shoe here, which you're really just looking for overall protection. As far as who's this shoe for, I think this shoe is a good kind of everyman shoe. Um, if you're someone who wants a little bit more support in your shoe, is looking for some good durability, Brooks has an excellent reputation for kind of the quality and maybe makeup of their shoes and I feel the same about this shoe in particular. So if you want something that is going to give you that support, that's not going to necessarily break the bank, that's going to be, that's going to last, that is going to be really, really good for those bulk miles that you can wear day in and day out, I think this is an excellent choice. Like I said, I actually do think that runners who, you know, have used stability shoes in the past but want something a little bit different, um, don't necessarily want some like built-in stability elements might enjoy the shoe as well just because of the overall width of the outsole and midsole there. I also think this is going to be a really good option for those who are on their feet for long periods of time. Um, traditionally, you know, the Clifton, the Bondi from Hoka are kind of the go-to shoes for teachers, medical professionals, uh, service workers, just people who are going to be on their feet like all day, every day. This is another really, really good option where you're gonna have a supportive foam underfoot. You're gonna have a six millimeter heel to toe drop. So it's not a zero drop, but it is a slightly lower drop, which does help when you're on your feet for long periods. And again, that foam is supportive yet soft, which is gonna feel really, really nice under feet. 
Now, from a comparison standpoint, the first one I want to talk about is just with the Brooks Ghost Max 1. Um, you can see maybe slight differences in the upper there. Again, it's fairly similar, and obviously the geometry, the shape of the shoe is almost identical. But the upper on the Ghost Max 2, like I said, does feel a little bit more breathable and just like a little bit more flexible in some ways. Like it's not a stretch material, but I did feel very constrained in the Ghost Max 1. The upper felt a little bit stiff at times. Um, and then the other thing that we talked about was just that midsole. So it's a softer midsole overall. It's going to be a little bit squishier versus you got kind of a firmer foam over here. Um, and But with that, if you want pace versatility, if you want a shoe that is max cushion, that's going to protect your legs, but can go maybe those tempo paces, then you may want to grab the Ghost Max 1, which is on sale right now because the, the 2 is out. And so Ghost Max 1, excellent option for you. And again, looking at the outsole, like almost identical there. So very, very similar shoes overall but this is going to be kind of more of your traditional max cushion shoe, while this one was one that could go a little bit faster and was somewhat unique. Again, kind of comparison as far as cross brand comparison, the Coca Clifton is a classic. Um, Hoka Clifton and Ghost Max 2, very, very similar shoes overall. I think that the foam in the Clifton is maybe a little bit softer, um, just a tiny bit. And I do feel like the Clifton actually has a little bit more return or a little bit more pop, though it's not known as like a poppy shoe by any means or a snappy shoe. But for whatever reason, and maybe you didn't like the arch in the Hoka Clifton, maybe you didn't feel like it was wide enough. The Ghost Max 2 may solve some of those issues for you. Um, but these two shoes, very, very similar overall. And then lastly, comparing to the Asics Gel Nimbus 26, um, the Gel Nimbus 26, in my opinion, is, it's a max cushion shoe. For many people, it's like the max cushion shoe. It's an eight millimeter heel to toe drop though. And honestly, the shoe is overwhelming to me and it has kind of the sock-like upper as well, which I, I had trouble kind of getting good lockdown and not sliding around in the shoe. So if this shoe was a little bit too wide for you, if it maybe didn't give you the lockdown, if you wanted a slightly lower drop, the Ghost Max 2 is maybe a good alternative for you in that sense. That's going to give similar overall sensations. But again, I do think the Ghost Max 2 a little bit softer as the Asics, uh, as the Gel Nimbus 26 at times just felt a little bit firm, a little bit stiff for me overall. I almost forgot to actually compare to the Brooks Glycerin Max, which is Brooks's latest Max Cushion shoe. Um, these two shoes are very, very different. So the Glycerin Max is softer, but because of how they tune this foam, and it's called DNA tuned, right? You actually have a firmer foam in the forefoot and a softer, like very, very soft foam in the heel. So this shoe is very smooth heel to toe drop wise, but uh, is gonna give you a little bit more pop off the ground as you kind of come off of that heel. And it has a slightly more aggressive rocker pattern as well. Um, the difference here though, is that this is a $200 shoe and this is a $150 shoe. And I don't know personally if I think this is $50 better because I felt like this shoe was very heavy for kind of those longer runs. And it's not a shoe that I would take and do any speed work in. So if you're looking for more of a traditional max cushion shoe, something that's going to feel really nice on your easy and recovery days, the Ghost Max 2 is probably the better bang for your buck. I did like this because I do like a little bit of assistance. I do like a little bit of return. Even on my easy runs, I still want to feel fast. But if you're going to be taking these out for kind of a long run, both of them are pretty heavy. And my personal opinion or my personal preference is not towards max cushion shoes when I'm going long, but rather maybe something with a carbon plate or something with a little bit more snap or something that's just a little bit more responsive and a little lighter overall because I tend to get weighed down on my feet. So um, Glycerin Max review of this one is coming in the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that. But um, between these two shoes, very, very different overall experiences. And it really kind of comes down to what you're looking for or how much you're willing to pay. So final thoughts on the Ghost Max 2. Overall, I think it really does a great job when it comes to being a max cushion option, right? It feels very comfortable and smooth on your easy days. It can go a little bit long if you want it to. Um, and I just felt like the upper was a big upgrade. It was a lot more flexible, a lot more breathable. Felt like my feet weren't just strapped onto a piece of foam and felt like the heel to toe transition was just a lot more smooth. I did find the Brooks Ghost Max 1 to be a little bit clunky at times. All in all, I actually think that Brooks is flying under the radar in 2024. Um, they've produced some really, really good shoes. The full Hyperion line, the only one I haven't tried is the Elite itself. Uh, and then kind of the Max series that they've come out with, with the Glycerin, the Ghost, again, the Hyperion Max too. Uh, 
all really, really high quality shoes and some lot, and I've had a lot of fun getting miles on them. So stay tuned. We'll do some brand breakdowns towards the end of the year, kind of see who had the best year overall. But if you're still here, I sure appreciate it. Do me a favor. And if you're still here, hit that like button, please subscribe and leave a comment. Um, let me know what I could be doing better as a reviewer, what you'd like to see more of, what I should change. I'm open to suggestions as I continue to build this channel. Um, and as always, I'll leave you with a question, which is if you used the Brooks Ghost Max 1 and you've tried the Ghost Max 2, which one in your opinion is the best? Max Cushion Shoe. Thanks everyone.